Alaska, Caribou, Brooks Range, DIY, Guiding My Father. This is my video. Hope you enjoy it. Our journey began in Tennessee for me and in Savannah for my father, but ultimately the journey really begins on the Dalton Highway or the Hall Road. So once you get to Alaska, wherever you're flying into, Fairbanks or Anchorage usually, and then you get your car and get your supplies, it really starts there. It's 400 miles of dirt along the Alaska pipeline, uh, heavily used by truckers. Uh, you're going to want to slow down or pull over when they pass or you may end up with a broken windshield. Flat tires are common. So be prepared for that. Luckily, we, we only had one on our way up and back down, uh, and a really nice trucker helped us fix it. But it's it's a good it's a good drive. Uh, it's a beautiful drive. Enjoy it. You know you can camp along the way. You you can camp or you can stay at a hotel and get supplies and cold foot. But ultimately, our destination was Happy Valley, just before Dead Horse. And from there, we get on Super Cubs with Deltana Outfitters and load up. And off to the tundra you go. Now in Alaska, you can't hunt the day you fly. So when you get flown in by a transporter for caribou hunt, like in the Brooks Range, you're going to be scouting from the air for the day you fly in. And then they're going to kind of put you down in the zone where they think the caribou are headed. Usually it's how it works. So a day ahead of the migration. So in this case, we, we, we flew around. We saw some caribou moving, spotted a good sight on a creek to get put down on, and then once you're down, it's pretty much, you know, use weather windows when you got them, kind of quickly unload and get some, say your goodbyes, and the pilot's going to be on their way, and you're going to be setting up camp. All right, so we just landed somewhere outside of Happy Valley. Bunch of caribou on the way in. They're all moving around. Moving fast. We got the guys here unpacking. All right. In the middle of the boo. Now, once we were on the ground and unloading, there was it was kind of already raining a little bit and misty. We knew the pilots didn't want to hang around very long, so it was kind of say our goodbyes and get the lay of the land. Basically, first day is just setting up camp and taking care of supplies. So getting water, filling the packs, and doing a little bit of glassing and scouting. We were seeing caribou all until we decided to go to bed. So it was a good first evening, and we just got comfortable and got ready for a big next day. Action the first morning came hot and heavy. We woke up at four at first light and there were caribou down in the creek bottom near us. So dab went one way, I went the other. Tried to get some on film, but I did all this on a GoPro, so only so much I can do with that. But here's how it played out. By early in the morning, huh? there were multiple caribou down. Caribou down. Um, didn't get to film a lot of this. There's a lot of heavy action this morning. Uh, basically got up at four, saw a bunch of caribou on the ridge, snuck around, spooked them, did a big loop, got my wind right, uh, came in and had about, it's pretty wide open, hard to sneak up, but um, got about a 300 yard shot on this boy. Got a lot of work cut out for me now, but uh, this is where it's at, right here. Caribou down. Now, I have a lot of a lot of respect for caribou. When, when you when I think about caribou, what's really unique to me about them is that they basically don't have a home. They're they're born and they walk for the rest of their lives. It's not like a deer or an elk that have native ranges and and stay in relatively small areas from where they're born um, to what ultimately expire. Caribou hit the ground and they're going to walk thousands and thousands and thousands of miles in the course of their life. Pretty impressive when you think about it. And so a lot of respect for these animals. Um, you, you're going to 
one of the things that I always do with my kills is a ritual taught to me by my father, the, the Letzer Bissen. People ask a lot about it, but what I'm doing is I'm placing a, a last bit of greenery in the animal's mouth and then saying a prayer and saying my thanks um, and getting a lot of respect and just trying to take in the finality of what just happened and where it is and just, just be in the moment. Now, while all this was going on and I was trying to take some photos, I heard a shot ring out and that was my signal that dad most likely had a bull on the ground as well. And on top of that, before I could even get to him, another bull presented itself. And next thing I know, we had three bulls on the ground first morning, not even noon. Uh, I'm not sure where dad is. He's a mile or two away. And I'm trying to sort out in my head how we're going to do all this. So I headed to him. Just hiked up to dad's. He had started processing it from camp. We're back to camp, got some food in our bellies before coming back up. Now we're going to continue on this work job. Nice caribou. Dad can't breathe, he's excited. <laughs> From walking through the tundra. Ultimately, what we decided to do was basically process all three into game bags using the gutless method where they laid. And then from the farthest one, start shuttling me back. So we, we processed dad's and then moved to my second bull, processed it, and then moved to my first bull and processed it. If you're interested in learning more about the gutless method, I'd highly recommend searching for Randy Newberg's videos on the gutless method in the backcountry when it comes to quartering animals and getting them out. I, I just don't know the better way to do it. Third bowl of the day. Work is really just starting. We've got two processed and game bags. I haven't even started packing yet. Just got to the third guy. Um, a lot of activity this morning. And we'll get him in, in bags. And then we'll start doing shuttle packs back to camp. But it's already 1.30. Uh, these all guys went down around seven. 6 in the morning. 6, 7 in the morning. So. Got a full, full day, but uh, some pretty caribou up here. It's Brooks Range, Alaska. Once the last one was processed, it's pretty much time to start packing meat, so the camera wasn't running a lot. But in Alaska, you have to bring back all the animal before you can bring the rack back. So. This clip is the first load headed back, and then that evening was the rack from my the farthest bull coming back, and then it wasn't until the next day we went back for the other bulls. As far as packing caribou goes, for me, it's it depends on the size of caribou, but it's usually it's a couple loads and it depends if you have a cape or not but it was generally i'd go get a load of meat and then dad and i would go together to get the last load um and shuttle it back but a lot of hiking i was doing a lot of shuttle alone each time then going back and forth with dad and the it's really hard walking on the tundra i can't really describe it any more than that it's just a bunch of these uh mounds of grass and and when you you see they step around them and you have to really high step just to walk normally or you step on them and they roll and, and tortures your ankles. So there's really a no win situation, but the best walking for us by far was along the creek bottom.
one key piece of gear that really helps in the tundra, whether it's with river crossings or if an animal dies in a bog or you have to cross a bog, is is these hippers that we're wearing from Neos. And we found these at Barney's Sports Chalet in Anchorage. I don't know if they're still making them, but they're a really, really handy slip over, over your boot. They're just a handy tool in the tundra for sure. Back at camp with caribou number two on the back. Trying to get our rest of the meat here hung. We got one hung. We'll get this guy up and then we'll head up to the top of the mountain. Get dads. A few hours of three in camp. Now you'll notice as I walk back into camp that I've already erected these, these tripods. One of the issues I thought ahead on on the tundra is that there's no wood for making meat poles for hanging meat. So knowing that, you, you can leave meat bags on some of the, the lower bushes and kind of hope that they're up off the ground. But I thought I'd just bring extra ultralight tarp poles. So I, I erected these basically these little these mini, mini teepees like a tripod use of a camera using the meat bags as a center weight and then I'd be able to erect a tarp over them to keep them dry in the rain so this is kind of my tundra system for hanging meat so after we got the two hung it was time for uh, just hammer some food and some for lunch and then head up to get dad's bowl Getting dad's bull took a couple of loads again and this is now you know three days in and we got all three bulls in camp um including fly-in day and it was you know big relief off to have all the meat hung uh, have everything in camp and just be able to kind of relax and rest the muscles because legs and back were pretty sore <laughs> And now that we have all three bulls back, you can see how I've erected a tarp over the over the tripods so that not only can they cool, but any any rain that comes, the meat will stay dry. And since we drove the Alaska pipeline, we thought we'd have some fun and make our own version of the, on the tundra. All right, welcome to Bungard Caribou Camp, Brooks Range, Alaska. Been working hard for only a couple days, uh, packing a lot of meat off the tundra here, but we're back in camp. We got meat hung and protected behind us. Uh, life's pretty good right now. Um, really grateful for these guys and the chance at one more. It's like the herd's mostly moved on, but we're going to keep hunting and see what fate holds for us. Dinner time at camp. Caribou. Now one nice thing about getting any animal on the first day of a backcountry hunt is you got food for the week. Now obviously we planned to not get any caribou as far as our food went, went. So when you get one, you get to substitute out a lot of things. My lovely wife, Ashley, love you Ash, she had already pre-planned pre a by-day menu. So when we landed in Anchorage, we knew she had printed out a list to shop for. And then from that list by day, which I, which items to pull 
for each meal of the day. So super easy, takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, and it saves you a lot of time when you're buying stuff. But it was wonderful to have all this fresh meat, eating back straps, eating tenderloins, having fresh vegetables, um, so that we didn't have to just totally live on, on dried food. So we were doing all right. like stopping to pick wild blueberries the next few days passed we, we entered into a good weather window we took our time we, we hunted around camp we we weren't really seeing many caribou in the area so we were glad we shot early in the hunt but we also started getting a little concerned about meat so we decided to go ahead and satellite message the air carrier to come get us you know we were seeing some bulls but they were way off in the distance we couldn't get in front of them so we ended up having a real nice last meal and I was doing dishes and then I think dad's playing a prank on me telling me there was a caribou walking up behind us and guess what? So we were just cleaning up in camp, fourth night, literally doing the dishes and dad says, freeze, look behind. And sure enough, our fourth bull just came in. Dad's still breathing hard. <laughs> And we snuck around, uh, got in position. Um, he's down. We're going to go out and start the last quartering job of the journey right now. He's laying out there. All right, we're walking up on number four. Okay. What do you think, Dad? I don't know. I might have to put this one on the wall instead of the other one. <laughs> nice. The way that last evening played out was really something you couldn't make up. I and mean, I literally thought Dad was playing a joke on me about a bull walking up. And and <clears throat> then there was just this loner bull walking across the tundra straight for us. and. So luckily, we, we were able to get him down before we got into a bog. Bugs kind of came out that night. But, you know, we, we, we broke him down. We could see him from camp. So we packed back to camp. Wasn't that bad. I was able to get all the meat back. And then Dad was able to bring that last rack back by himself. And it was past midnight at this point. But uh, we didn't care. We could see. And we were having a good time. Lo and behold, we're back at camp. Uh last night finishing dinner that's a look behind camp and uh there's bull number four walking around dad dropped him we just got back to camp whiskey bottles empty this is how you do a hunt in alaska Smile. The last morning actually came a little unexpected. It was a good thing that we called for the air pickup because we woke up to a lot of rain and pretty fogged in conditions. We were supposed to get picked up at 9 that morning, but we they weren't able to get in until early afternoon in a small weather window. So they, they came in in pairs, and the challenge in this case was they flew us in together with all of our gear. But now we had all this extra hundred, hundreds of pounds of meat to get out. So we took some time to show the pilots what we had rigged up. But they wanted to get out of there. So And they had to they basically fly Dad and his gear and his meat out. And then have enough time to come back and get me and my meat and Brax and my gear. So And they didn't know if they'd be able to do it. So they left me. I stayed behind with enough with more food and a tent and you know half the gear um while they flew dad out and then i waited and waited and waited and luckily at the very end of the day 
they were able to get back in to get me or I was likely going to spend a lot of extra days out there because weather came in and actually prevented them from getting some sheep hunters off off the mountain it's near us and so it was lucky timing and that's always a risk you, you face in Alaska but we got out and then we had to cleverly come up with a way to rig the racks uh, on the roof of a rental car notice the use the wise use of dixie cups and then we went fishing if you want to see that's a different video though so hope you enjoyed it and got any questions please feel free comment below reach out i'll be happy to answer them